What is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Club Japan So today I want to do a bit of a life update video because you guys seem to like these and I haven't done a video for ages where I actually talk just raw sound riding videos So on today's video I'm going to be talking about four topics First one is uh, I smashed my phone into two pieces Second one is I pretty much almost quit my job uh, third one is I fell off the wagon and started drinking again after eight months of sobriety so I'm pretty pissed off with myself and the fourth one is a new business opportunity and a new video series so let's get on with it so yeah first topic is um, I smashed my phone into two pieces so what happened was I've got a magnetic phone holder so I stuck the phone onto a swing arm of a bike while I was outside cleaning it with um, petrol cleaning a dirty engine and I accidentally kicked over the little the little tub of petrol and it went all over the back tire of the bike so I immediately went oh no that's not good let's push the bike out of the way so uh, I pushed, started pushing the bike and then all of a sudden the bike became really hard to push so I thought ah it's just an old bike the chain's probably fucked so I'll just give it a big old push so I pushed it and then I heard this kind of snap noise and realised instantly shit my phone was on the swing arm and what had happened is it, it obviously moved and got squashed between the chain and the sprocket so yeah, my phone is now in two pieces. So recently I've been talking to a lot of people on Instagram, uh, people that watch my videos or, you know, fans of the channel or whatever. Um, so if you're wondering why all of a sudden I'm not replying to you, that is why, it's because my phone is broken. Hopefully I'm getting a new phone on Sunday. It depends whether the phone company is gonna cover it on insurance or not, because I do pay like, I don't know, like $5 a month for insurance or something. So we'll see about that. Um, so yeah, sorry if uh, if you think I'm ignoring you, it's not that at all, it's just I don't have a phone anymore. Alright, so, second thing is work. So last couple of months, I've taken so many days off work. I think I've probably taken over a week off work just by calling up in the morning saying I don't feel well, I've got a temperature, I've got a cold, whatever, but the real reason is just because I really have started to hate the job. Um, there's a couple of people at work who are dicks and they sort of steal the fun out of the work. Everything I do is wrong according to them. Uh, do it again, do it again. And it's just started to piss me off and like, sort of get me down a bit. So yeah, I started taking loads and loads of holidays and then eventually my boss just got pissed off and phoned me and said look do you want to quit or what what's the deal here why why are you always sick all of a sudden and so i i was really tempted to say yeah fuck it i want to quit but in these uh covid times that we live in it'd be pretty hard to find a new job so what i actually did was i said can i change from full-time to part-time and uh so he seemed pretty happy about that uh, i didn't really think this through but I've realised now that if they did want to fire me, <laughs> it'd be a lot easier for them to fire me as a part-timer because they can just say, sorry, we've got no work for you today. Sorry, we've got no work for you today. So I hadn't considered that. Uh, but basically what's good about it is I now have every Sunday off. So basically all I've done is changed my contract from a full-time employee to a part-time employee. And I'm still doing exactly the same hours, except I'm taking every Sunday off now as well. So. It's basically become a five day week instead of a six day week. So I'm going to take a pretty massive pay cut. So I was on a pretty good salary before, but now it's part time. I'm only getting 1,500 yen per month. So uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be a little bit worse off for money. Um, but yeah, hopefully it'll be better for me mentally. I won't be so stressed all the time and pissed off. So that's that. So the third thing I wanted to say is, you guys may recall I did some videos called Drinking with TJ and in one of them I, I started the video by saying Hey, I think I'm an alcoholic, but you know what, for eight months I've not had a single drop of alcohol I'm doing really well and basically I've cured myself, I'm not an alcoholic anymore I'm not, I don't feel the need to drink anymore, it's all good Well, 
fell off that wagon. So I did really well for eight months. And then a combination of work stress and missus stress. <laughs> um, I can't remember what, what it was about, but we had some little argument. And the first thing I did was go straight to the 7-Eleven and buy some whiskey and soda. And yeah, so since that time, that was probably about two months ago. And since then, every day I've been drinking, which I'm kind of disappointed in myself at, but yeah, I'll try and get back on the wagon soon. But uh, second time round seems to be a bit harder than the first time. It's quite funny actually, well, it's not funny, but I was kind of surprised at myself because that day when I decided like, fuck it, I'm going to go to the 7-Eleven and buy some whiskey. As soon as it touched my lips, like literally as soon as I could um, taste it, I was like, yeah, baby, welcome home. It was so bizarre because I obviously I thought I've, I've gone eight months. I've done so well. I totally don't need any more. Totally don't miss it. Fucking alcohol. It's evil. La 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 la. Literally, as soon as that shit touched my lips, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Where's he been all my life, baby? Uh, and, yeah. And so since that day, I've had a drink literally uh, every day. Right, so, fourth thing, fourth thing, fourth and final topic. Something that I um, have been thinking about is now I've become part-time, uh, some weeks I'm going to have three days off. So my company, the schedule is basically every Monday it's closed and every other Tuesday. So when you're a full-time employee, you only get six days off a month. Oh shit, that was a fucking red. Oops. Talking too much shit, not paying attention. So anyway, uh, what I was saying is, I will have three days off uh, sometimes. So I'll have a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So I thought, okay, I could do another part-time job. Maybe, maybe I could do some English teaching or something, just to give me a bit more, bit more money. But after speaking to a few people on Instagram um, about bike prices in Japan and looking at the prices in Australia on Gumtree and stuff like that there's some bikes here that are pretty much half price compared to Australia so what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of becoming like a buyer um, now I've already made a few uh, a few inquiries with shipping companies in this city and the guy didn't know a price for Australia but for New Zealand I can ship any bike of any size for 800 uh, Kiwi dollars. I think the price in Japan is about 65,000 yen, but, but obviously New Zealand's a bit further than Australia, so I'm guessing Australia will be cheaper. Uh, but obviously the UK as well, no problem. Maybe America as well, I don't know, don't know what the rules are for, for importing stuff into the States. But yeah, I've, so I've done all my homework now on the paperwork side of things, and it's super freaking easy. Uh, much easier than doing a vehicle inspection so what I'm going to be doing is selling KTM KT and selling the Suzuki SV650 and with that money that I'll pull together hopefully I'll have about 600,000 yen maybe I'm going to buy something that I know is a popular bike that can be sold on but also one that I want and so I'll ride it um, but I'll advertise it for sale anyway but basically if it doesn't sell I won't care because it's a bike that I do want but uh, yeah basically what I'm thinking of doing is just doing a bit of buying and selling um, bikes and parts as well you know accessories basically whatever if anyone out there wants something from Japan that's hard to find in your own country then yeah get in touch with me on Instagram and I'll hook you up so I'm, I'm still uh, working out how much I will need to charge to make it worth my while and uh, obviously some bikes that are advertised on Yahoo auctions are nowhere near me so there's obviously going to be uh, money needed for collecting whether that's either me going on the train somewhere and picking it up myself or it's um, getting a transport company to drop it off at, at the local docks to me so still a few things to work out um, but basically from what uh, what research I've done already 
there's not really a lot stopping me from doing it it's pretty straightforward no phone so I can't reply to anyone just yet on Instagram but yeah the uh, video that I'll be doing is a new kind of like video series I'll be just doing a, like a weekly review video of the auctions and showing you anything that's like interesting or rare or holy shit this is cheap or holy shit this is expensive just you know show you what's what's available and then if anybody wants to uh, bite the bullet and uh, import a bike from Japan then get in touch all right guys quick update from me and i'll see you in the next video ciao for now